Okay, I want to see this twenty-eight million dollar house where I lose my mind. The home offers eleven thousand two hundred square feet of living space, six bedrooms. Oh, someone said it's three bedroom. That makes sense. I mean, it's still insanely expensive, but like, someone literally said this is a three bedroom, three bathroom for twenty-eight million, and I lost my mind. Rooms, six full. It has eleven thousand uh living square uh living space dude square footage of living space three powder rooms and it's sited on just around an acre overlooking the spectacular views the property is currently on the market for 28 and a half million dollars come on in and let's take a look incredibly reasonable dude what a reasonable price point for a house look. yeah i will be buying this now chat thank you this is the house i will be buying So we are in the great room. This is the center of the home. This room has 30 foot high ceilings. So there's a- Now this is a waste of space. You put a fucking full court basketball court in here. What are you doing? You're just like, otherwise you're just literally like, oh wow, cool. You put a bunch of couches that you're never gonna sit on. There's no TV. Like, what am I doing? Is this a hotel lobby? This is what I will never understand. Like rich people do shit like this where it's like, it literally just looks like a hotel lobby. It's a waste of space. It has 30 foot high ceilings. So there's a lot of drama, a lot of volume. It is inspired by the Louis Kahn Art Gallery. Every piece of art and furniture has been specifically chosen to work well in the setting and in the environment. We have the travertine floors, the beautiful white oak walls, and then one centerpiece here is really the fireplace. This is board formed concrete. It is a very warm concrete, so it almost looks like a wood and it just works perfectly with the oak walls. Yeah, I like to get a concrete that's warm, that looks like wood. I like to pay $28 million so I can have fucking concrete. So we're currently in the family room kitchen area. We've got this very spacious family room that all opens up to the beautiful grounds and views beyond. And then behind me, we have one of two kitchens. We actually have an additional caterer's kitchen behind the main kitchen. That's how you know real rich people shit. When they have like a separate kitchen for the, you know, the unwashed peasants. That's one way to find out whether you're, you're dealing with like a rich person or Six months. a really okay. rich person. Kitchen. This particular kitchen really provides an optimal space for casual family entertaining. The kitchen offers rift oak cabinets, which continue seamlessly into the aesthetic and genre of the remainder of the house, including the great room. We have a stove top with a grill. Additionally, we have refrigerator and freezer beautifully integrated with the same rift oak. What the designers- Low key, that fridge is dog shit, dude. Even Soda Pop has got a fridge where you knock on the window and you can see what's inside. Miskip's got a fridge that plays music. What is this fridge? Oh, just the classic 90s fridge. Look at this, dude. This shit looks ugly as hell, dude. It looks ugly as hell and it's small. Rift Oak. Whack ass, $28 million house. Ass house with fucking non MP3 music playing fucking fridge, dude. Get out of here. What the designers wanted was an integration of. That's what happens when you fucking give no stats to. This fridge is what happens when you use all of your points on stealth. And then none of your fucking stat points on endurance. This fridge is always encumbered. Rift Oak. What the designers wanted was an integration of functionality and aesthetics. And what we have here is a beautiful, beautiful display area in lieu of just cabinets that close off. One of the most bold design elements in the home is actually the window system. Not only do they provide access for indoor, outdoor entertaining, they're perfectly positioned to provide a very, very bold and dramatic element to the entire lower level of the property. They actually lock at the touch of a button and beautifully position to close off the interiors. Next, we're going to go into the bar lounge and media room. Come on in. Wait, who buys this? I don't even understand who has the kind of money to buy this. Like, this isn't like Cara Delevingne can't buy this shit. Or can she? I Behind don't know. Behind me, we've got a beautiful wet bar that offers a mirrored backdrop, which reflects the views of the entire city. This offers an incredible space to entertain, lounge, and have formal or informal 
gatherings. In addition, the room is anchored by this beautiful board formed concrete and huge oversized fireplace. Behind me, we've got the screening room. No LA hillside home would be complete without a proper screening room. Of course. Room. You gotta have a fucking proper screening room, dude. Obviously, duh. It's like having a Hassan Abbey stream without an ad break at the top of the hour, you know what I mean? What they've done here is they've beautifully integrated a lounge style screening room in lieu of the formality of reclining chairs and really an ideal destination for screening a movie or actually just having an intimate gathering. I love coming up the stairs and then knowing that I'm going to enter and cross over to the bridge. This bridge here is- Bro, my house has a bridge in it, dude. What the fuck? Welcome to my house. Hey, I got a bridge. It's the center of the home. And this is in between where the primary bedroom is and all of the secondary and family bedrooms. So you have a similar balcony that is also overlooking- Why? Like, this makes no- Okay. Actually, actually, this confirms my original take. This is literally a basketball court. And these rich people don't understand that this is actually a basketball court. Why else would you have this? Like, these are the stands. These are for people to watch up here while you're playing basketball. That's it. The great room and the different parts of the home and the view. Bro, they put a balcony in there, dude. That's crazy. So we're in the primary suite. When you walk in, the first thing that you do see is the view. So you're outside, you're inside all as one. The view is part of the entire ambience of the bedroom. That's you wild. have a sitting area here where you can sit and relax. And then you have a breakfast bar so that you don't have to leave your suite here to go and get <laughs> What? Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> What the fuck? Yo, she said sweet. That's okay. This is a hotel, dude. This is literally a hotel that they're trying to sell as like an actual house. Why would you want to have that's so weird, dude? Breakfast bar so that you don't have to leave. Is this some rich people shit that I didn't know about? Like that do rich people have like breakfast bars in their rooms now? Is that what it is? You got me to watch You're three ads sweet because here I to didn't go use my and get anything. Money this in month. addition, That's we have two walk-in closets. It's fully outfitted and it also has the island with the beautiful stone. This bathroom is just beautiful. We have integrated sinks. We have a fabulous architectural skylight that just filters beautiful light. Dude, even, okay, every part of this screams a hotel, okay? This is a hotel. Like, th these, these mirrors are just like, that's a hotel mirror. Throughout. Behind here, we have a shower that is the full length of both of the sink areas. We have the same Calcutta marble throughout. The primary bathroom here also has this beautiful tub overlooking the view. It just all fully integrated with the most beautiful materials and in keeping with the feel and the ambiance of the rest of the house. The upstairs office actually doubles as an additional bedroom and offers one of the most compelling and dramatic vantage points it's of the stunning sad, views it's beyond. Like... When you're sitting at your desk, you can look at the entirety of the city from downtown all the way to the ocean. It really is one of the most exquisite views in Los Angeles. And it... Why did they put like, was that a fucking bottle of that better be blue label, dude. If that's not blue label, like, that's so whack. To the house. I can't tell from over here. I don't know. It's not blue label. Blue label is supposed to be a blue bottle. Wow, dude. $28 million house and he's got black label, dude. Are I you fucking kidding me? Ads at the top of the hour every no hour disrespect, but like, money actually full disrespect. You're going to really put Have black label months. on your office desk, dude? Hey, welcome to my fucking office in my $28 million mansion. Uh, here's some fucking, here's some $60 whiskey, dude. The upstairs office actually doubles as an additional bedroom and offers one of the most compelling and dramatic vantage points of the stunning views beyond. When you're sitting at your desk, you can look at the entirety of the city from downtown all the way to the ocean. 
it really is one of the most exquisite views in Los Angeles. In addition to the primary bedroom, we have three guest bedrooms, and each of them are truly suites because they have their own bathrooms. Each of the bathrooms have beautiful stone, their own walk-in closets. Each of the closets are fully outfitted, and they all walk out to a beautiful balcony area. The house was designed and sited on the lot to feel almost like a tree house. It's cantilevered above the hills. In addition to that, we have this beautiful green foliage encompassing all the grounds. And with all the glazing, you see the views beyond, you see the trees, the greenery, and then of course, the oceans as the backdrop. So we're in the gym. What is absolutely special? Bro, $28 million, this is the gym, dude. Yo, what's up, dude? That's crazy. Like, that's the gym, dude? You, you fucking placed a, a, a stationary bike and, and dropped two yoga mats. You're like, this is our gym. $28 million, chat. I have a better gym in my fucking two-bedroom right now. ...and unique about this gym is the fact that all of the doors open, and here you are being part of a zen garden just serene and peaceful. And of course you have an outdoor shower, just a very special place, very, very peaceful. It's so stupid. Now we're going to head out to the rear grounds. The house was ultimately designed to showcase the expansive and breathtaking views beyond. Come just on quiet. out. What we've got here is several- I mean, this is 28 mil just for the views, like, straight up this is in los angeles like you're not going to get an acre of property like this ever so it's just it's just views and that's why the infinity pool it sucks that like they shot this on the only cloudy gloomy day in los angeles history so it's kind of wild that they like you can't even get to see the full thing there's like smog outside and shit like that but like this would be pretty sick like this is the this is the reason why this house is so expensive well, different enclaves First and foremost, we've got the really beautiful grassy area for lounging. Behind me, the pool anchors the entirety of the backyard and really cascades over the horizon into the You're view. You're new to LA, aren't you? Yeah, I've only lived here for 10 years, so I'm, I'm pretty new to Los Angeles, man. No pool would be complete. Motherfucker moved here from Kansas like last week thinking that he's gonna be a celebrity. And he's like telling me, you're new to LA, aren't you? Without an infinity spa, which actually is inset within the pool and offers a fantastic vantage point of the entire views beyond. Furthermore, for our chilly nights in LA, which we don't get many of, we've got a beautiful fire pit. It also adds a compelling touch to the design of the entrance. So as you walk into the foyer, your eye carries you directly out to the view the hardscape area provides an ideal space to set up your lounge chairs or even have outdoor dining. To maintain the symmetry of the yard and the symmetry of the house, we have an additional grassy area with a lounge space that is right outside of the family room and kitchen. You would never think that being up here in this private enclave would provide such immediate access to the hub of Los Angeles. However, the fact that we're above Sunset Boulevard, one of the most important locations in Los Angeles, makes Forest Knoll one of the most coveted streets and enclaves within the city. Yeah, it's the location that, the location and the crazy fucking views that you get from this house. I mean, look at the house. It's literally entirely centered around the views. Like every single fucking gigantic room. Oh God, the use of space in this is so nasty. I feel like, oh my God, dude, you could fit like three houses in this house. I hate to be one of those like, fucking yimby dudes who's just like oh my god oh my god we gotta do urban sprawl urban sprawl urban sprawl or whatever the fuck but it, it just like it literally it just feels so it feels terrible like it, it feels like a child dreamt this up we've got eleven thousand two hundred square feet of beautifully designed space on just over an acre of land. Six bedrooms, six full baths, three powder rooms, and all this is available on the market at $28.5 million. Just a reasonable $28.5 million, dude.